Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JGM Games, and in this tutorial, we are going to be detailing the handle which we modeled in the second tutorial of the series, so stick around. If you're looking for a high quality gaming mouse or just a mouse for the workplace, then look no further than SteelSeries. They offer the highest quality mice for the lowest prices and even can compete with Razer and Logitech given their low prices. If you'd like to go see these mice, use the link in the description to go check them out. Without further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial. Alright, so in this tutorial we're going to be detailing the handle and we're going to be doing some cool things with modifiers and stuff to make this really stand out. We're also going to be bringing back some things we did with the blade so that we can finish this tutorial. But before we get started, I have a few things I'd like to talk about. One, I'm sorry that I haven't had a tutorial last week. I was on vacation. Two, we have redesigned the website. Uh, I did this while I was on vacation because it was one of the things I could do on my laptop. And so, yeah, go check it out. Um, there will be a link in the description to jgngames.com. There will also be some probably flashing text up on the screen so that you guys go check it out because it's a really cool website. And also, we have some really cool merchandise out now as far as JGN Games apparel, iPhone cases. I really like these shirts. So don't for go order those. There is a link in the description to that as well. So definitely go check that out. But now let's go ahead and let's jump into the tutorial itself. So I'm going to open up Blender and I'm going to open and I'm already in my detail.blend that we made in the last one. So in the last one we did this blade, we gave it this really sharp edge and this really detailed line right there. In this tutorial we're going to be doing some things with the handle. So let's go ahead and look at the image and see what it has on there. So I'm going to hit Z and also I'm going to hit Alt B to turn my keycast on. I found this last night and so I'm going to use this. I'm sorry it does mouse wheel but so you see we have five rings. We have one right there, we have one right there, one right there. So we've got five of them. So that's what I'm going to try to replicate now. Now, obviously, I can't do much because, well, this is a detail itself. So let's go ahead and we're going to do this right now. But the handle needs a bit of smoothing. So we're going to do the thing we did right here, but on the blade. Also, we've got some vertices we've got to fix right there. So I'm going to do that in a later tutorial. So let's hit Z on the keyboard. And let's hit, um, we're going to go into click on this tab to go into edit mode and we're going to do the same thing as we did last time and do the sharp edges. I'm going to skip through this part because you guys have already seen it. But I'm going to do the first ones. I'm going to alt and right click right here and I'm going to hit space and then I'm going to type in mark sharp. Alright, and I'm going to do that for the rest of the ones that I want sharp so I'll be right back. Alright, so now that we're done with this, let's go ahead and smooth this. We're going to do the same thing we did in the last tutorial. I'm sorry if this covers it up. I'm going to turn it off when I'm doing these modifiers. So now let's go ahead and add these modifiers. So I'm going to go to my modifiers tab and I'm going to hit Alt B to turn off my keycast so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to go to add modifier and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Now it's going to mess it up a little bit. Do not worry. It's designed to do this. We're going to get this two subdivisions an optimal display and I think I put it on wrong. I did put it on wrong. Nope, I didn't put it on wrong. All right. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to set this to 2 on view, and I'm also going to click Optimal Display. And yeah, 2 should be fun. So now I'm going to also add what is called an Edge Split modifier. Now we're going to turn off Edge Angle, and we're just going to keep sharp edges. And I've, these are what we marked in this. This is what we marked right there. Alright, so I'm going to move this like that, because that's how you get the effect you want. You put the edge split on top of the subdivision surface. And I'm going to apply the edge split and then the subdivision surface, and then I'm going to hit smooth. And that will smooth it out. Now you'll see it does some weird things right here. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to hit tab and then hit A twice, and I'm going to go to shadings slash UV and hit recalculate. That makes sure that we get our normals right, and that looks really nice. And we've got a few errors up there, so I'm going to turn on back face culling to make sure I've got this right. And I did not. You can see that we have the vertices are on the wrong side. So I am going to hit, um, turn off back face culling, or turn it on again, I guess. And I'm going to recalculate the normals a few times. I'm going to flip them. And something we can work on later when we're going back through the bugs. So I'm going to leave that alone. 
So now let's go ahead and let's jump into the circular thing. So, or this ring thing. So I'm gonna hit one on my numpad, turn it back on, one on my numpad, then Z so that we can actually see what we're doing. And we're gonna make these rings right here. And so this, I haven't found a way to do it on the vertices of the handle itself, but I do know a way to do it with another object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit three on the not the numpad, but the top number bar. I don't know what it's called. If you guys know what it's called, please leave it in the comments below. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to hit Shift C to recenter my cursor. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add a circle. Not a UV sphere, a circle. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this on the X axis 90 degrees. And then I'm going to go to Add Modifier, Screw, and I'm going to set this on to the Y axis, all right? Now, yes, that just makes a sphere, but as soon as I start dragging this out, you'll see it starts making a ring. Pretty cool. So now that we have that, I'm gonna hit Z so I can see, it. and it does this cool checker pattern, and we don't want that. So I think I drug on the wrong axis, so I'm gonna drag it back in. I'm gonna hit Tab. Yes, it was on the X axis, but you could get some cool effects. Like that. So we're going to drag it out on the x-axis a little, or the z-axis a little bit. Not too far, but then we're also going to drag this out on the x-axis so that we get this really thin look. Now this looks giant, but I'm going to make sure I get this right. Because I want it to be thin. Alright, and then we have a few settings. So first of all, for screw, we're going to type in 25. Now that just does this, and that just makes it spiral up, and I'm also going to do like this to try to get rid of these vertex errors, and then I'm going to hit Alt-B so you guys can see what I'm doing. That's what I used to turn on my keycaps. Now for angle, we need to set this to something, I'm, I've done the math already, and I think 850 does, or 1850 does a good job, but We'll see. So that should give us one, two, three, four. Yeah, that gives us five rings. But you'll see that it's really triangular, and that's not what we want on there. So we're going to do get a steps, and we're going to set this to 150. As soon as we hit enter, it makes this really nice, smooth ring right there. And that looks really sharp, and that'll look great on our handle. So now that we have this, we're going to leave this modifier like this for now, so that if we need to go back, we can actually go back and use it. Also, we're going to click calc order right here, right there. That's so that we can have all of our normals facing the right way. Now I'm going to hit, now I'm going to hit Alt B, and I'm going to hit M, and I'm going to move this to layer one, not layer two. I made it on layer three, but layer two is my rendering layer, and so I'm going to leave it like this. All right. So now that we've got this, I'm going to scale this down tremendously to like that, and then I'm going to zoom in like so, and we hit one on the numpad so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to rotate this, like so, and I'm going to try to get it even with the handle. I'm going to move it up, and then I'm also going to scale this, um, whoops, scale the x-axis just a tad, like so, that looks good. And then I'm going to position this on the handle itself. And then I need to scale the entire thing down. And now we need to position this on the handle itself. All right, so this needs to be moved down. And it's also giving me this weird oval shape. I'm going to hit 5 on the numpad because perspective would actually be really helpful for this. I'm going to scale this on the y-axis, like so. Scale this on the x-axis, whoops, global, I'm um, using local, all right, and then I need to scale on the, um, I need to in increase the screw a little bit, maybe like 50, but then I'm going to scale it on the y, like we have it, to make it thinner. Alright, that looks great. So I'm going to jump into front view and I'm going to continue scale moving this around. 
Uh, maybe scale it up. Um, scale. I don't know why, like so. And I'm going to position this near so that it fills up the entire handle. And honestly, that looks great. So it's already in smooth shading. It needs to be scaled on the X, um, not the X, the Z. But I'm going to jump out of perspective mode so that I make sure I'm not scaling too far. And then maybe drag down just a tad and scale. I'm going to rotate to make sure I have my rotation right on here. And I didn't the second time. I'm going to scale it up a little bit. Let's make sure I'm getting this right. Probably going to skip through a lot of this. Alright, I think I've got it. So now that I have this, let's go ahead and join these two objects together. It'll just make it easier for UV unwrapping. So I'm going to make sure I apply the screw modifier on here. I'm going to right click on the handle and I've already applied the modifiers for both of those. So now I'm going to select the screw and then he'll shift and select the handle. I'm going to hit control J and that joins it. Now it may do something very similar to this. Just need to recalculate the normals and that should fix it. So that's basically all there is to making the grip of the handle um, and detailing the handle itself. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to leave a like on this video. And also, don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. There will be a, um, a card at the top for the playlist. And yeah, don't forget to check out some of our other content. And don't forget to like comment and subscribe and also check out the JG and Gaze website and the new online store. Both those links will be in the description. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.